Let me read to you a passage from the 10th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 1 to 9. It's the Gospel for Thursday of the 28th week in Ordinary Time, Year 2. St. Luke writes, The Lord Jesus appointed 72 disciples, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs, to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the labourers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out labourers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house, and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the labourer deserves payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it, and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. That's from Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 9. And what does it suggest to us? Well, you know, <clears throat> in view of the widespread phenomenon of religion in world history, and in view of the immense variety of the religions of man, a great question is simply this. What is religion? Perhaps it is impossible to give a definition that fits all religions. If one defines religion in terms of the worship and service of God, or of the knowledge of God and of his will for us, what are we to say of those religions that do not allow for a God, that have no formal place for him? Classical Buddhism is, we could express it, agnostic. It consists of a search for happiness and fulfilment, which is understood to be attained in enlightenment or nirvana. Much the same could be said in various respects of Confucianism, a great ethical way towards harmony, especially harmony among men. And what is to be said of the immense variety of indigenous religions. Whatever about all this, the distinguishing feature of Christianity is that the God of the Christians was seen and touched and heard. He was and is divine, and he was and is man. He is the infinite God, become a man like us. He is a tangible fact. He spoke, he ate and drank, he suffered and died, and he rose from the dead. Moreover, this Jesus who is God is one of three persons in one God, and each of these persons is the one eternal and infinite God. The second person became one of us, and the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily. It is a breathtaking claim, and so human was Jesus Christ that many at the time utterly rejected the claim. They took up stones to stone him with because, St John tells us, he claimed that God was his own father and thus made himself equal to God. Has there ever been so striking and extraordinary a religious doctrine in the history of man as that of the Incarnation? The God of the Christian religion is the man Jesus, risen from the dead. He is the Lord of the world, and the task of the Church is to draw all men into His friendship. The Christian religion consists in friendship with this man Jesus who is God. Being a Christian, then, means being 
a true companion of Jesus, one who is prepared to accompany him whithersoever he, Jesus, chooses to go. It means entering into the life and friendship of Jesus and following his way and shouldering a share in his interests and mission. Christ came among men with a mission to redeem the world and to bring that redemption to each person in space and time. Being a Christian means entering into that mission and making it one's own daily mission. This mission is lived out and exercised according to the vocation and the circumstances the providence of God has placed one in. Our Gospel today narrates how, and I quote, the Lord Jesus appointed 72 disciples whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the labourers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out labourers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. As Christ was missionary, so too is the Christian. As Pope after Pope has taught, the apostolate is an essential element in the Christian life. The Christian life is not just a life of personal or even public piety, even though piety is absolutely essential. A piety, though, that had no interest in advancing in practical ways the mission and redemptive work of Christ in and through his body, the Church, is a very incomplete piety. Christian piety is apostolic. It is missionary in the sense that it is immersed in the mission of Christ to the world. This applies to the active missionary, it applies to the ordinary family and working man or woman, and it applies to the Carmelite in her monastery, the Carmelite nun. St. Therese of Lisieux was a young Carmelite nun who died at the age of 24 at the end of the 19th century. She attained a great level of holiness, and a distinctive feature of her holiness was her ardent missionary spirit that poured itself out in prayer and penance for the salvation of souls. There are two things we must take seriously if we wish to be authentic Christians. Firstly, we must grow in a lively friendship with the living Jesus. The Christian religion consists in love for Jesus and all that this implies. Secondly, Friendship with Jesus involves sharing in his redemptive mission and bringing the fruits of it to others, be it in one's family, among one's friends, within one's workplace, wherever. Our Gospel passage today reminds us of this, of this missionary and apostolic dimension in every Christian life. Let us take up this challenge for Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. 